time for another stock review. This time we're talking about Applied Digital, formerly Applied Blockchain. It's had a recent rebranding, ticker symbol APLD. In this uh, review, we are going to take a deep dive at the financials. We're going to look at the balance sheet, the profit and the loss, a, a solvency score, who's buying on the inside, sentiment around the stock, who's selling on the inside, uh, a profitability and solvency score. Uh, a lot of lot of detail here. Um, we're going to look at the profit, the loss, how much debt they have. We're also going to take a look at the website. We're also also going to look into some latest news and a full back test looking at the S&P 500. So a lot to go through right now. Uh, and again, just remind you that this company used to be Applied Blockchain. It's now Applied Digital. Okay, so this information is provided completely free of charge. No one pays me to make uh, reviews like this. I'm not sponsored by the sources that I use. I use AlphaSpread. I will give you a link to that in a moment. I believe it's the most advanced algorithmic software because it's not bias. It's just numbers. And uh, this is not like Mad Money or Jim Cramer where they have an opinion because they're paid to say an opinion or they're biased on it or whatever. I'm not trying to grow the biggest YouTube channel in the world. I'm trying to grow the best, most engaged most honest channel in the world. And in fact, uh, I'm not even in any stocks. I'm only in the S&P 500. I'm fully invested, but only in the S&P 500. So I can't be judged for being uh, pumping, dumping, or spreading false information. All this information is facts uh, using the most advanced software. And that is what I'm presenting to you right now. I will reply to all my members' comments in the uh, comments below. So if you leave me a comment, I will answer all your questions. Do smash the like button if you like what you're what you're what's, what you're seeing now. It helps grow the channel, but more importantly, it will suggest my content to you. If you don't like it, however, please click the down like, and you won't see my content anymore. That's what it does. That's so really really important. That if you don't like it, uh, 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 click the the down like. And subscribe and ring the bell if you'd like to be notified about these breaking events and uh, news throughout the day. Okay, what is Applied Digital? Let's start off nice and straightforward, and then we'll get into much, much more uh, deep numbers as we go. Remember, this is now Applied Digital was Applied Blockchain. Okay. So what is it? If we look at it, Supply Digital Corporation operates as a technology company which engages in the development and operation of data centers which provide computing power. The computer was founded in May the company, sorry, the computer. The company was founded in May 2001. It's headquartered in Dallas, Texas, just down the road from me literally five minutes away. The listed name for APLD is Applied Digital Corporation. Okay. Uh, now, Wesley Carl Cummins is the CEO. I'd like to invite Wesley uh, to re respond to my review. If you'd like to, if you'd like to uh, reach out to me, I'd love to interview you. I do have a Meet the CEO series. Perhaps you might like to do that. Uh, employees, 121 uh, employees, small company. As I say, Dallas, Texas, just down the road, 2001. Now, if you were buying this on margin, 60% maintenance requirement. So it's regarded as mid-risk with this brokerage. If you were buying it through them, they regard it as mid-risk. Low, low risk is 25%, 100 is the maximum. Okay, um... As you can see here, it's a market cap of 662. Now, remember, the market cap is just the value of the stock, outstanding stock. It doesn't mean that's the value of the company, how much it's worth. It's just that's what people are prepared to pay for the stock today. That's not a basis of valuation. High today is 558, 52 week high 1162. Price to earnings ratio, as you can see, it's negative. The company is losing money at the moment. So it's uh, negative $15.48. You're losing money. Um, so the first thing we need to do is compare that uh, to other companies in the similar sector. And in a minute, I will give you a link so you can go and compare to other companies in the same sector. But we're also going to look at the balance sheet and the debt position and see how that, uh, how that uh, plays out. Dividend, no dividend, of course, here. Uh, it's, a, it's purely a growth stock. Average volume, 4.5 million. Very low volume, and uh, the average is today, 600, uh, sorry, 692 is today. So it's way below average today. Uh, very low volume stock, so you can get stuck in it. You might not be able to get out of it. It's not technically a penny stock at the moment. It's above $5. 
Anything below $5 is a penny stock. It's not, um, but it's very, very close. Okay, now, um, uh, Morningstar's giving it a review. I don't use this at all. Very, very basic information. I would not use that as a as a guide to buy a stock because Morningstar are uh, employed. It's like JD Power tells you the best car to buy. You wouldn't go out and buy that because JD Power says they're a marketing company uh, and these are analysts that are paid to talk about the stock. Now, What's interesting is um, the uh, uh, they consistently beat, apart from the last earnings, they consistently beat expectations. And uh, Wall Street seemed to be typically uh, the, about the same percentage wrong each time, apart from the most recent earnings. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, what is also interesting, apart from the last one, we have been moving it, uh, in the right direction. So I'd like to know the news around this, and we can look at the news in a moment, why uh, we missed here when we were expected to go up again and we went down. Anyway, who are we in bed with? Who else on this brokerage is also buying uh, this stock? That way we can get an idea of how it train, uh, how it trades. Soundhound AI, I don't know anything about that one. Riot Platform, I haven't, uh, I haven't looked into that one. So far, I do know quite a bit about, uh, actually, the CEO talks rubbish. Um, he says things to pump his own stock. Has no reflection of what's going on in the actual markets. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, so we are in a, we are in bed with uh, people that buy SoFi. If you buy SoFi, you're just gambling as far as I'm concerned. Um, anyway, Marathon Digital, I don't know much about it. ChargePoint, I've done a review on it, but I don't remember uh, what my, my view on that was when I last looked at it. And C3AI, good digital. I've made money from this. Uh, sorry, AI... Um, AI uh, stock. Um, but again, it's overbought. Everyone gets a bit uh, too excited when it comes to AI. They, they'll overbuy anything to do with AI. So it's going to be volatile. Uh, the company it keeps would say so. Anyway, there, there we go. There's our basic start. Let's now look at the company itself and learn more about them. So let's do that now. Here we go. This is the website, Applied Digital. Remember, it was uh, uh, Applied Blockchain. They changed the name. So let's uh, let's zoom in and, uh, and have a little look. Um, so building next generation data centers, Applied Digital. Now, when I'm looking to invest, uh, first of all, I, of course, I don't own the individual stocks to be, uh, you know, I'm um, uh, completely unbiased and uh, transparent, uh, so on and so forth. So I don't believe in owning the stocks. I only own the S. SMP. That way I can be truthful to what I'm saying here. Um, building next generation data centers. Uh, this is obviously in the world of Microsoft and, and stuff like that. And uh, I own Microsoft and others great companies on the S&P 500, of course. But I'm looking for prop uh, proprietary companies, unique companies. That doesn't mean to say that an, uh, another company can't come along and do something that, uh, you know, Microsoft is doing or whatever. But uh, I prefer to... Uh, choose a company that's unique and proprietary and is the only one doing what they're doing. So that's why that's how I choose companies also on their balance sheets and their debt positions and so on. Good sound investing rather than get get uh, rich quick schemes. Anyway, Applying Digital uh, designs, develops and operates next generation data centers across North America to provide digital infrastructure solutions to the rapidly growing high performance computing industry. Okay, uh, what are we up to? What are they up to? Uh, that's a good question. What are you up to? <laughs> Applied Digital is a US-based um, operator of next-generation digital infrastructure, providing solutions to the fields of high-performance computing, HPC, and artificial intelligence, AI. APLD has two business segments, next-generation data center uh, and... Uh, collocation services and AI GPU cloud services under Psi Computing. All right, there's a bit about what the what the company is about. Mission statement, then we'll look at the news, then we'll go into the numbers. How well is it funded? So mission statement, Applied Digital seeks to develop and operate ultra low cost digital infrastructure purposes built for high performance computing applications by bringing data centers 
directly to the point of power. This allows the company to build infrastructure that largely uses renewable energy and encourages the build out of more renewables by providing a higher return on investment for sustainable projects. I like all of that. Uh, I'm very much into that field. So that's good to hear. Okay, now let's look at the latest news from the company. This is just a couple of days ago. In fact, January the 16th. Let's read into this. Um, <clears throat> a designer, builder, and operator of next generation digital infrastructure designed for high performance computing applications announced today uh, it has signed a conditional agreement to provide data center capacity at its Ellendale, North Dakota campus, subject to finalization of definitive lease documents. The conditional agreement is for a total of 100 megawatts for a term of 10 years and is conditional on securing financing for the completion of construction. The company is in conversation with potential lenders to secure the project level financing needed. The total contract value TCV is approximately 2.2 billion over 10 year term. So we could be looking at raising money. We could be looking at the stock. Um, in fact, um, we might be able to see that when we look at the chart in a moment. Has it uh, recently dropped because of fears of dilution? We'll come on to that in a minute. How well is it funded? Does it have any cash? Does it have any debt? We'll look at that in a moment. Applied Digital Design develops and operates next generation data centers across North America. We already know that. Uh, Forward-looking statements. This release contains forward-looking statements. That's just uh, the, the verbiage. We know all of that. Okay, so they've uh, uh, they've gone through all that with us. We know exactly what they're planning on doing. All right. Now let's just go uh, into the, uh, the into the numbers. First of all, just before we jump into the numbers. Uh, because that news has been out about a week, let's see if the price has dropped. It's actually gone up. People like it. So that would suggest, in my opinion, perhaps they are well funded because normally if we're, if we're, uh, we're looking for uh, financing, then it scares investors. Normally the stock would drop after something like that. In fact, it's gone up 10% over the last week. Over the last month, though, however, we're down 21%. So this news is about um, 15 days old. Um, so around about here, there you go. There was the information being rumoured, potentially dropped off, and now we're rising. So as I say, that makes sense. They're looking for funding. Down we go. People worry about uh, dilution, and then it starts rising, which is what's happened happened now. Right. Let's go into the uh, the numbers of the uh, of the company and have a little look. Okay, so there's the balance sheet. We'll go into it in a second. So we'll start off with the intrinsic value. The intrinsic value, a lot of people use this. Uh, I use the base case, but you have to dive more into it. Don't be lazy and just go, well, it seems valuable. It seems cheap. I'm going to buy it. That really doesn't, uh, that doesn't give you enough information. You really have to uh, be careful. Anyway, so... APLD, intrinsic value. We've got uh, the base case is 88% undervalued. Best case, we're not in a best case scenario right now. We've got macro conditions and all sorts of things, high interest rates, wars around the world. It's uh, undervalued by 92%. Worst case scenario, 83%. So it sounds good, right? It sounds good. However, we have to be careful because there could be some warnings. Are there any warnings? Uh, yes. Possible value trap detected. A, a, a value trap occurs when a stock appears uh, uh, inexpensive based on fundamental analysis, but fails to reach the interest, intrinsic valuation over time. So often due to uh, underlying issues not reflected in quantitative data, scrutinize beyond numbers, assess long-term potential. Very, very important. So it looks cheap and some people go, great, I'm going to buy it. It looks cheap. It isn't. Or it may, it may not be cheap. We have to do more research, which is what this is all about. Okay, so let's do some more research. Smash the like button and uh, consider subscribing to my channel uh, if you like what I'm doing here. And remember, it's, it's just numbers, facts, 
I'm not trying to pump anything at all. I'm just giving you the information. All right. Okay. Uh, Q2 earnings call. We, we, we are, our AI technology picked this up on the last earnings, and this is what we have. For the fiscal second quarter of 2024, the company reported a net loss of $10.5 million, a decrease from the prior year of $268 million, adjusted uh, net loss was 5.2 million down from 3.8 million. Challenges included uh, 5.2 million in unproductive lease expenses. Positive cash flow stemmed from 81.8 uh, million in customer repay prepayments, uh, easing capital expenditures for data center expansion. However, supply chain issues with the networking components have have uh, le led the company to its lowest to, to to lower its fiscal year 2024 guidance. That's why the stock is going down in addition to its lending requirements, borrowing requirements, uh, to a revenue run rate of approximately 500 million, an EBITDA uh, run rate of 250 million. Okay, thank you very much indeed for that. Now then, of course, uh, supply shortages could be worsened with what's going on in the Red Sea right now. You know, uh, those Houthis who are attacking the, uh, the container ships, they supply the world with goods, including themselves, which is bonkers why they're doing it. But there you go. People are bonkers, aren't they? Uh, let's have a look at uh, the financials, all right? Uh, the revenue has increased up 35% on its re recent range to 115 million. That's very, very good. And we have an S curve here. You can see it going up and then slowing over. S curve, we're looking for an S curve of a company. So that shows potential. Uh, things are improving and uh, and expected to improve dramatically going forward. Operating income, that's up by 41% over its most recent range. We were in the red. Now we're starting to move up as far as operating income is concerned. And again, expecting a steep climb there. Net income up 31% on the most recent range. This looks good. Financials look good. Uh, free cash flow up 23%. Cash flow. We like cash flow. Cash flow is the survival, the lifeblood of a business. All moving in the right direction. Capital expenditure has been going down and now we're starting, starting to spend less. We like that. They've, we've done the investments and now hopefully we're going to reap the benefits up 20% on the most recent range, spending less. In other words, operating cash flow uh, just dropped down 13% uh, from the most recent range. OK, so some good news there. Now we want to look at the balance sheet uh, in, in total. Right. We've got assets of 481 million and 325 in liabilities. It's a little bit hot on the liabilities. What we don't want to see is more liabilities and assets, what comes in and what goes out. Um, but we, uh, you know, a new business and spending and developing and investing, it's going to have some expenditure may have some borrowing. We'll come on to that in a second. Um, but um, it's not too bad. We don't want it, you know, 80, 90% or beyond of the assets. Uh, so we're okay there. It's not the best balance sheet, but it's it's okay. Let's go into the into the debt position. Long-term debt. Out of 325 million, it has 70 million of debt. Now that, that equates to 21% of its liabilities. That's manageable by the looks of things. Um, let me see how much cash on the books they've got. They owe 70, they owe uh, 70 million in long-term debt. They have 9 million. So they're not in a position, they're not like Apple or Amazon, which could pay all their debts off, but they have 9 million and they owe 70 million. So they've got a bit of debt, this company has to say, but They've got some cash on hand there. 21% uh, of their balance of their uh, liabilities is long-term debt. We can see they've been uh, investing. But um, with interest rates coming down, this could be a catalyst for the company because as interest rates come down, having so much debt could improve their position. I wouldn't say it's too much debt. They do have... They do have nine million in cash, um, and uh, you know, but there is a substantial amount of debt there, no doubt about that. Efficiency of the company. Now, this is important. This is where we talk about the moat, uh, the sort of um, the protection around the company. Is it likely to go bust? Uh, has it got good margins? Well, if we look at it, the gross margin 
is at 30%. Now, I would think that's quite low in this sector. But again, I'm going to give you links in a minute for you to do more research and compare it to the competition. If you're interested in buying this company, then you can look at it compared to the competition and go, hey, this company is making even greater margins with less debt. I prefer them. I'll give you that in a minute. So anyway, we are moving in the right direction. We were, you know, negative 102%, but we are moving in the right direction. Everything is moving in the right direction. Operating margins is going right. Uh, everything is going in the right direction at the moment, which is good. That's good. We like to see that. Now then, because of the debt and because of the profitability, like I just said, I don't think it's that high for this sector. But again, I'd have to compare it. It's in the it's red, 22%. So it's very low score, um, but that's expected in a young company investing in itself. It's spending money, it's borrowing money. Its profitability isn't great. It's not going to be, but it needs to be, okay? This is the concern I've got here. Like I just said about the debt they've got, they've got a reasonable about a debt. It's not, uh, thank you, uh, Polyus, for your uh, subscription. I'm making this on a live broadcast. Um, the, uh, the solvency is, uh, is, is a concern. It's, uh, got 23%, uh, solvency score, extremely low there, folks. Uh, it could run out of money. Um, as I'm talking about it, the stock is actually going down as well, which typically happens when I go live on my, on my, uh, show, if I'm talking negatively about a stock, uh, it's going down. Um, it's, it's not got enough cash to pay its debts off. Um, it's not out of control with debt, but it's got a lot. And when you think that um, Amazon or Microsoft can do what this company does with its eyes closed, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't invest in it. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't see that as an opportunity for me. Anyway, even so, I wouldn't anyway, because I don't, uh, I can't buy the stocks because I would be um, biased if I did. The idea is to present you with the facts. So the solvency score being 23, uh, it doesn't mean the company are going bust anytime soon, but it means they're going to struggle um, and they could have, uh, you know, difficulties. Now, you know, uh, again, it's not about uh, making money. It's about uh, avoiding not making money. That's how to make money. It's, it's easy to make money on the stock market. The hard part is to keep it. Uh, you could buy this expecting some real good growth and you could end up losing out. But there's there's certainly a, a high risk here of failure. Um, APLD, 175% upside from Wall Street. So you, that's that's the payoff, if you like, for the high risk. 175% if it goes if it goes well, maybe 265%. Worst case scenario, 122. Okay. Now then, competitive landscape. I'm going to give you the links at the end of this video, so you can actually click on these links here. And you can look at the competition, see what they're doing and see how much money they've got. And that way you can make a, an informed decision. This is the competition uh, that, our, that our AI has detected. All right. I'll give you the link for that in a moment. Inside trading. Now, over the past 12 months, Applied Blockchain, which is now Applied Digital, it's changed its name, of course, uh, has bought $825,000 and sold $2.3 million. Okay, so the insiders have sold it, uh, which is always a concern, particularly when the stock's on its ass like this. Uh, they've sold out as well. So the director, Moore Virginia, she sold 73,000 worth of shares, uh, as you can see. Um, and mo most recently, it's been sold. Um, so that's not a good sign when a company is in f financial stress like this. Um, the insiders, people that work there have taken their money out. So there's, a, there's some red flags here. Doesn't mean it's all doom and gloom, but extremely high risk. But then you've got the, 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 the massive upside if you like, uh, if you like living dangerously. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the short position. That's a concern as well. 18.62% short position. Now 20% is regarded as excessive. At 20%, it's excessive short position. You can get a squeeze. However, there's not enough volume here. Not enough volume for a, a short squeeze, which is great for the stock. Um, this, however, is um, uh, being driven down without any volume. So again, more downward pressure being put on the stock. Okay, that's not very good. 
Also, there's no news around the stock. No one's covering it. There's no sentiment, so which means once my video goes out, it'll probably rank number one within a week or, or 10 days on YouTube, which is great for me to get this information out. But uh, no one's talking about it. Without anyone talking about it, there's no volume. With no volume, there's no interest and so on and so forth. But uh, there we go. So I haven't got any more information to share share with you uh, on that on that level. Let's now go over to doing a back test. And this is very, very important because I often get criticized, well, not often, by a few trolls. They say, why, why are you comparing uh, a, a low float stock like this and a penny stock, which it isn't actually, it's not under $5, why are you comparing it with the S&P? Well, it's, it's sensible because you need to compare what you could get invested somewhere else. I mean, I'm, I'm not joining a fan club. I'm just trying to invest for my future so I have money in the future. It's simple, really. Uh, anyway, so if we'd invested in uh, January to 2023, that's all we can do here. We have limited uh you know, limited time uh, to go back. All we can do is go back to January 23. So, you know, just a year. Uh, we can see that uh, $10,000 in the S&P would have made us 12 grand, uh, would now be worth $12,000. So we've made a couple of, couple of grand, very nice, uh, about 20%. Uh, had a good little run the last few months on the S&P. That's, uh, that's in, in blue. In red is the applied blockchain, which is now, of course, applied digital. It says we'd have $36,000 over that period of time. So we've exploded uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and what, what have you. But, uh, you know, it's worth, it's worth looking at that. You know, you have to, you have to look at that and, and you know, and see. Um, Anyway, so let, and let me share with you on this chart here. You can see exactly over, over the last year since January 23. You can see how it's gone up um, quite clearly. All right. Um, and now it's fallen back down again. So it's very, very volatile. Anyway, there is my thoughts on uh, applied digital. Now it's known as um, it's not a stock for me. Uh, very high risk, limited amount of funds now, might need to raise more money, shareholders might get diluted, a lot of short interest. It's um, it's in bed with other uh, other very risky stocks. I think if you li like this sector, you just buy Microsoft or Amazon or just buy the S&P. Um, you can make more money elsewhere. Um, but the rewards are high if, if it all pays off. Who knows? Anyway, I promised you those links. Uh, if you click above my head, uh, at, at all the way through this video, wherever you see an eye, uh, there's information. And also down here in the description, there are the links as well to uh, Alpha Spread, which is where I use, where I find this technology. Um, and my members get a free plan. And uh, if you are a member, you get 10% off if you want the premium plan. It's completely free. The information is free. Uh, if you just want to review a couple of stocks, if you want to review every stock, you need an unlimited plan. And then my uh, my link will take you there and give you a 10% discount, which basically makes my membership completely for free. Okay, there we go. So um, over here, I'll put my full alpha spread review list. I've reviewed over 60 stocks now, just giving you the facts, the information that you need and, all, and more information as it comes out that I think is relevant to you looking at applied digital. There we go. There is another review for you. I hope you enjoyed that. Until next time, as always, be very, very careful. Do your research and as always, take care of yourselves, your money, and most importantly, take care of each other.